what's good i'm back again with another video and today you are going to learn how to define your own personal style without spending any money this is the way that it should be done anyway like you shouldn't be buying anything when you don't really know what your style is yet that is a recipe for disaster so yeah i'm just gonna give you guys some tips for how to define your own personal style based on the way that i found my personal style let's get started so the first tip that i have for everyone is like the easiest most accessible it's to use Instagram and Pinterest boards as style curation tools. So on Instagram, you have that like little saved feature where you can like bookmark photos and like organize them into like different uh, folders or like categories. And I also love using Pinterest boards to do the same thing. So um, I would recommend starting with Instagram and Pinterest and kind of like start pinning or like saving things that like really catch your eye and like things that you would love to like dress up in and you'll notice as you start saving different items you'll notice like a trend or like a like an overarching theme for example if we look at my pinterest board real quick you will notice a lot of the same type of stuff and that is an indication that this is the type of stuff that I like. So for example, I love rings. <laughs> Obviously, I love gold jewelry. I love like a boyfriend jean, like a high-waisted boyfriend jean. I love blazers with like, you know, clean lines, but I also love really slouchy, like street fashion inspired pieces. I love, I love baggy pants. I love like big oversized jackets. Necklace stacks, I obviously really like stuff like that. And then if you look at my bookmarks on Instagram, um, I obviously really love sneakers. I love uh, streetwear, like street fashion. Um, I love sweaters. I love like a collared shirt. I love mixing like masculine and fem feminine pieces together. I just really love that whole thing. And you can really tell in um, the images that I have saved on both Instagram and Pinterest. So that is how I defined my personal style. I just like literally went on Instagram and Pinterest and just started like saving things that really caught my eye. And then I realized, oh, if this is catching my eye, obviously I really like this and this is part of my personal style. Another tip that I have is to make a list of items that you know you absolutely love and absolutely hate. For example, I love sneakers, I love crop tops, I love high-waisted bottoms. I could literally wear that exact outfit and be absolutely in love with it because those are three pieces that I really love. On the flip side, what I hate, y'all already know this, I hate ballet flats and I hate a boat neck neckline on a top. I just don't like it. The only thing that I hate about this sweater every time I try it on is the neckline. It's this boat neck neckline that is really killing me. The only thing is this boat neck. I'd buy this if it didn't have a boat neck neckline. And the reason why this is important, especially to like make a list of things that you don't like, is so that you're not like wasting your time searching through things that like you you just know that you don't like. For example, I'll go to Zara or something and I'll find a top on the rack that, you know, looks really nice. It's like a color that I like wearing, it's kind of like a style that I like wearing. But if I see that it has a boat neck neckline, I'm not even going to try it on. Like I'm not even just I'm not even going to waste my time because I know that I'm not going to like it because I hate boat neck necklines. It's really important to know the things that you do like, but it's super important to know the things that you don't like. So I recommend making a list of a both things. Another thing to consider is does your lifestyle or your environment inspire your style? I think that this is something that a lot of people forget, especially with how like popular social media is, you can kind of tap into different lifestyles and different environments just like by scrolling. But also I think observing like the culture or community that you're already a part of can really be beneficial in helping to define your style. So for me personally, I'm a military brat, so I've lived all over the place. I remember when I lived in Japan, I really loved 
the um, uniforms that the girls in school, like the school girls were wearing, like girls my age were wearing. I went to an American or like an international school, so we didn't have a uniform, but anytime I would go off base and see girls my age, they would be wearing these super cute like school uniforms. And I just like really loved that aesthetic and I was super sad that like I couldn't wear that to school. Um, but what ended up happening was that that developed as I got older and I noticed myself like reaching for like plaid skirts or like pleated skirts all the time and I realized as an adult that it ca it came from me living in Japan and just like loving that aesthetic <laughs> and that's the reason why I love wearing it today. And then I also lived in Houston, Texas and my neighborhood was very predominantly black Hispanic. Baby fat was really huge and like I mean this was like the era of like Mike Jones and Paul Wall so like grills were like really popular when I lived in Houston and then when I lived in Long Beach which is like in the LA metropolitan area um, what I love about Long Beach is that it's so diverse culturally, racially, ethnically, but also economically. So I was really inspired by like that, you know, laid back like surfer kind of aesthetic. But then we also, in Long Beach, we also have a really huge skate culture. So I loved, you know, wearing like Converse, like Chucks. And I remember shopping at Zoomies and the van store all the time. And then, you know, there's also a huge like um, urban street culture in Long Beach as well. There's a lot of like subcultures in Long Beach and being surrounded by like that diversity like really informed or like inspired my own personal styles. I don't know, I took everything from my own experiences and kind of like melded it together and it all like works in harmony with my own personal style. So I think that by like leaning into the community that you're already a part of, like the culture that you're already a part of, like kind of observing what people are wearing, observing what you do like about what other people are wearing, observing what you don't like about what other people are wearing. I think by doing that, it really like gives you like a fuller sense of style, of personal style, and like you can really help define your style that way. Another thing to ask yourself is what colors do you like wearing? For me, I, if you watch my channel at all, I love wearing black, I love wearing white, and I love wearing red. Um, I just found that out by wearing a bunch of colors and like taking pictures of them and like looking back at pictures and saying, oh, you know what, I actually hate wearing green, <laughs> but I love wearing red, you know what I'm saying? So. Um, I think also a part of that came from like my high school colors were like a cardinal red and gold and those are two colors that I love wearing. I think that has something to do with it but I also do think that my skin color just looks good wearing red so I don't know you know you just have to like look at your own experiences. I think that's how you find a unique personal style is by taking your own experiences and bringing that into your fashion sense in the way that you present yourself to the world. I think that's like the best way to have a unique style is, you know, basing it on your own experiences because you are your own unique person and you have your own unique experiences. So if your fashion sense is built around that, you'll always be unique. I don't necessarily like to say dress for your body type. I think that you should dress the way that you want to and dress the way that you feel most comfortable, but then tailoring your style to honor your body type. So don't dress for your body type, but dressing to honor your body type. For example, if you have a small bust, you can wear low cut tops. Like I see a lot of girls that have like a small bust. They're like, oh, but I can't wear like low cut tops. And I'm like, you can wear low cut tops. You might just be comfortable wearing low cut tops with a certain neckline. You know what I mean? For example, for me, I like wearing bodycon dresses sometimes, even though I'm, I have a very narrow body. Um, I love wearing bodycon dresses sometimes, but because I have very narrow hips, I, I tend to wear bodycon dresses of a certain style. So anything that like cinches around the waist is usually what I will go for when I'm wearing bodycon dresses. So I'm honoring my body type by choosing that particular style of bodycon dresses. You know what I'm saying? There's always a way to experiment with different styles for your body type, that's all I'm saying. You just have to find the right neckline or the right cut or the right cinching for your body type. Honor your body type. I also recommend just going to stores and just trying on a bunch of stuff 
you don't have to buy anything like literally just go into Zara or go in, go into Nordstrom or go to thrift stores and just like try on a bunch of stuff and see what type of styles and what type of cuts what type of fabrics fabrics are so important um, I love certain types of fabrics and I hate other types of fabrics I'm not a huge fan of linen I think that they get wrinkled so easily I tend not to wear them all the time I think there's a time and place for them but you will not see a lot of linen in my closet I love cotton because it is a breathable fabric I love cotton t-shirts I love graphic tees that are made out of cotton so you'll see a lot of cotton graphic tees in my closet but I figured that out by being surrounded by diversity of different fabrics and materials. You know, I always go to stores to try things on, even if I don't buy anything, just to get a better sense or a better idea of things that I like or don't like. Okay, there is a difference between basics and essentials. Basics are the building blocks of your outfit. These are t-shirts. These are jeans, tank tops. These are the building blocks of any outfit. Essentials, on the other hand, are kind of pieces that really encapsulates your personal style. For example, let's put myself in all basics. So I'm wearing a t-shirt and I'm wearing jeans, right? Pairing it with my essential pieces will inform the essence of my personal style. So if I wore my basics, like I wore a t-shirt and jeans, and then I looked into my essentials wardrobe and I threw on a really cool jacket and a, a pair of really dope sneakers, like, you know, when people look at me, they'll know what time it is, you know what I'm saying? Like they will know what I'm about based on that jacket and those sneakers. That jacket and those sneakers inform what my style is all about, you know what I'm saying? Essentials can be anything from hats, jackets, shoes, bags, accessories, but also, you know, like graphic tees of a certain style. Those are also essentials. Just anything that captures the essence of your personal style is what an essential is. But I do recommend buying your basics first. Another tip is after you've done all of the previous steps or the previous tips, document all of your findings. Write down what you do like, write down what you don't like, write down the stores that you enjoyed shopping in, write down the stores that you hated shopping in. Also, if you like live in a big city like LA and you loved shopping on Melrose, but you hated shopping in Melrose Place, you know, I think that's a really important distinction to make. So write that down. If you live in a city with multiple shopping malls, you know, what environment of the shopping mall did you enjoy being in versus, you know, like, did you like being in this mall more than the other one because this one had more natural light and you were happier in this place and like you felt more creative and clear-minded in this mall? Well then, okay, now you know to go to that mall. You know what I'm saying? So document all of your findings. This way, when you go to actually buy things, you'll have a nice little shopper's guide to help you inform your purchases. This could be in like your iPhone notes app. You could actually like write it down. For me personally, I love writing things by hand because it just makes me feel like whatever I'm writing down seems more tangible. But you know, you know you, do what's best for you, whatever works for you in your situation. All right, now we are going to get into your own like personal fashion or shopping philosophy. My personal shopping philosophy is to save up for high quality pieces. I really do believe that this is the best way to shop. I always advocate for spending more but buying less. I always advocate for buying intentionally and spending intentionally and not over consuming. I feel like in today's fashion climate with you know so many like fast fashion shops and like Instagram shops and things like that, we as a society have lost the desire for quality and craftsmanship. For me as an individual, I've never lost that. Like I don't mind paying more money for like a really nice high quality piece that's gonna last me a long time. Everyone has their own personal shopping and like fashion philosophy, but for me it's definitely to spend more but buy less. I completely understand why people buy fast fashion. I shop fast fashion sometimes as well. It's because it's very affordable and very accessible, but fast fashion does fashion every week. <laughs> if you look at some of these fast fashion websites, they will have like 2,000 tops 
in stock. There are real ethical and environmental impacts of fast fashion. But you know, if fast fashion is all that you can afford or have access to, you know, you know your life. You know your situation the best. But regardless, I always encourage people to buy and spend intentionally. Know what you're putting your money towards. And you know, if you are buying fast fashion because of how accessible it is or how affordable it is, you know, perhaps consider shopping less often. Maybe you don't need to go to the mall every single week to buy something. Or you can buy mostly like high quality sustainable pieces and then supplementing your wardrobe with like, I don't know, three to five fast fashion pieces each season. I have a video talking a little bit more about this, but in general, I think that you should be thinking about how you're gonna buy before you start buying. Where you wanna spend your money, how you wanna spend your money, what colors do you like wearing, you know, what is your personal shopping philosophy. You should be thinking about all of this so that it makes it easier for you to shop in a market that is so oversaturated. By narrowing everything down, um, you can you know, have a better sense or a better idea of what you like and don't like and then you'll end up just buying less. Also, fast fashion adds up, you know, it's $20 here, $30 here, $25 here, and boom, you just spent $75 on three pieces that are not even going to last you a season when you could have spent that $75 on a really nice high quality piece that will last you for a very, very long time. So, you know, you figure out your own shopping philosophy. That's just mine, personally. Spend more, buy less. So here's an overview of everything we just covered. Use Pinterest and Instagram as style curation tools. Make a list of clothing that you absolutely know you love and absolutely know you hate. Ask yourself, does my lifestyle or environment inspire my style choices? Figure out what colors you like to wear the most. Dress the way you want to and that feels comfortable and authentic. Then tailor your style to honor your body type. Buy basics first. And then figure out your essentials, pieces that capture the essence of your personal style. Document all of your findings. And last but not least, spend more, but buy less. Figure out your own personal shopping philosophy. That is all that I have for you guys today. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope this kind of helped serve as like a guideline for defining your personal style and kind of zeroing in on what you like and don't like. Give this video a thumbs up if this helped you. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace!